Welcome to the Whitetail Legacy Podcast, coming in your ear holes. October 1st. We smash it 10 yards tonight. We'll see. The buck we call Pickles. The south wind pushing us back to the zag. Set our stand on our back. Set it out. Set it out and see what happens. Hey, Pickles. Pickles. Absolutely drilled in. Then boom, he said, Good buck. We'll get my buck, and then we're gonna go get homie's buck. It's been urban peace as hell. Got him? Got him. Pickles is dead. Kevin Gates, both kills on hanging hunts. An absolutely incredible season. My first public land buck. Nice work, dude. Look at that. Triple brow on the right. I'm digging that. Fucked out October 28th. An absolutely incredible season. Here we go. Welcome to the Whitetail Legacy Podcast, coming in your ear holes, and we're coming in with a lot of info this week, guys, coming in with Josh Prophet, and we're talking about how to effectively scout ground. Um, we're talking about what he's looking at right now um, to get on these deer, not just trail cameras, very little trail camera talk from the trail camera goat in this episode. We're talking strictly how he's finding these deer, what he's looking in per, per time of the year what he's keying in on, what's he, what he's remembering, and how he's breaking down these big, giant pieces of public that he's hunting. Um, before we start this episode, let's get into the people that make this possible. Going to start off with Exodus. It is still Velvet Fest, guys. All the way to August 19th, it's still Velvet Fest. So every camera order comes with a scratch-off card that could save you up to 15 and 25% off your next camera or arrows. Um, and... P.S. They got some badass shirts, and I gotta get me some of those. That the new Exodus Outdoor Gear logo is so sick. Um, um, don't forget those exclusive Velvet Fest savings um, with the email newsletter. Uh, make sure and sign up for that newsletter. That is going to be your key to getting those in-house deals that very few people are getting. Um, and make sure and use that hashtag Velvet Fest on all your social media posts to win on this online event. If you're out there scouting, you're out there pulling cans you're out there watching a velvet buck you'll be getting a ton of exodus gear sent out to random people that participate in this program um that's august or july 15th through august 19th so you still have some time guys awesome prizes for anybody that uses hashtag um and if you're in for a in the market for a new trail camera velvet fest is the perfect time to do that um the first 100 orders you're gonna be able to save 20 percent by using code velvet fest and every single camera order comes with one of those scratch off arrows or scratch off cards that I was talking about. You're going to get some huge deals, even including uh, on the new Exodus MMT tailored arrows, which are shooting great. And remember that Exodus camera always coming with that five year, you know, BS warranty, theft and damage coverage. That's literally a half a decade of coverage with the Exodus promise. All right, guys, let's get into a new ad read this year. Um, and a new ad read for this podcast. It's time of year. You guys need to get your bows out, making sure that they're still prime, making sure that they're still on. Um, if you get your bow out and you're in the market for a new string, um, the guys over at 330archery.com, um, that's the website. They're going to give us a 20% off code here, guys. Really easy, man. If you're in the market for some custom strings, you go to the website. They got a custom string builder right there. You pick your colors. You can get the mixed color, single color. You pick them what you tell them what kind of bow that you're shooting and they're going to make it and send it directly to your do door you can use code whitetail20 um, capital w whitetail20 no spaces for 20 percent off your order there on those new strings um so season is almost here so don't waste any time head over there and get some new custom strings for your bow today i got some custom uh, green strings uh, on my v3 loving them uh, i just got an all stone v3 um, so I figured, man, I'll just throw a little flavor on there and put some green strings on there. Um, shooting great, really loving them, um, and looks awesome, man. So if you're in the market, go ahead and check them out. Um, uh, let's get right into the episode, man. Like I said, Josh has been on this podcast multiple times. Love this dude. Love his style. Absolute grinder. Um, he's just different, man. He gets it done, and uh, he knows how to do it. I know he's on a lot of podcasts, but when you got a voice like this, it's got to be heard. So hope you guys enjoy it. All right, guys, we got Josh Profit on, man. How's it going tonight? Man, it's going, man. How are yeah. you? Appreciate you coming on here. I don't even know what number episode this is with you. Um, 
found your Instagram years ago. We actually got to meet um, at ATA show there. Um, you're always on a really good deer and I really enjoy your style of hunting and your process of, you know, not, not underdogging anybody. Everybody's out there trying to do their best they can. And we did a podcast last year, I think around this time with you, um, that was basically talking about that. So, um, this episode, we're going to break it down a little different. Um, I like Cameron from Exodus. He called you the trail cam goat. And I back that, you know, we've had multiple, I think we've had two or three episodes of the trail cam goat, which I'm kind of mad. We didn't say that. Um, because you are, dude. You are the trail cam goat, one hundred percent. So, well, I mean, I guess uh, rightfully so. I've yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's miles hanging them on the trees, so yeah, miles and miles and getting pictures. But uh, we're not, we're, we're not going to talk about trail cameras most of the time. We're going to talk about uh, scouting, but not just summer scouting. Um, you're always on a big deer. You're putting the work in. You're always out there scouting, and you're on giant tracks of ground um so i wanted to have you on this is what everybody's thinking about right now they're, they're thinking about where am i going to hang a trail cam where am i going to make a move where am i going to find a deer this is the i gotta find one you know time of the year so you're you're a master at that you're always on bucks um you're you're running so many cams you're running on so much different property you're always driving around glassing I love your Instagram post. I'm like, dude, this guy's got to have 300,000 miles on his truck right now. <laughs> this guy's just putting on the miles on that thing. Yeah. Um, it, I do put some miles on it. It seems like I can't ever find a place close to home, you know, because I've always, I've just always went where the deer were. Um, it didn't matter if it was 10 minutes down the road or two and a half hours down the road, you know, that's where I ended up. So. All right, well, let's get into the first question here. Uh, you're in Kentucky a lot. And you're hunting absolute giant tracks of public ground. Um, you don't have to go into full depth detail, but on these giant tracks of ground, what is just some key things where you're able to decipher, I'm going to hit this 8,000 acres, I'm going to hit this 4,000 acres, when you're looking at, you're hunting some 20,000 acre places, right? I mean, I hunted a 170,000 acre track. God. a couple of years ago you know it was uh, it was massive 300 miles of shoreline and you know I just kept it simple I, I talked to a lot of people and I've done a lot of research and from what I know the the bigger deer were on the north end and you know you, so the further you went south the deer got a little smaller but there were more so I kind of hung to the north end and I mean it's just like it is anywhere man them deer have to eat it doesn't matter if it's agriculture or you're in the mountains. And I just, uh, when I hit that piece, I just, uh, I just headed in straight for the, for the food, for the ag fields, because it doesn't matter day or night, the deer will show up there. Sometimes it may not be till midnight, but you know that, you know, they're going to be there. So that's always just a good starting point for me. It's kind of a common sense approach. You know, a beginner can do that. You don't have to go into depth. But I've always, no matter where I go, I've always started at the food because they have to be there. Started at the food. That's a good thing. That's, that's where we locate most of our big deer is on the food. Then it gets challenging kind of trailing them back. But if yep. you see a yep. big one on the food, at least you know he's there living. Um, I've also done that for shed season. Like walk those field edges. Okay, man, here's a giant shed. Now, next year, late season, you're trying to locate this deer using this food source um, in that area. And last year, man, the deer were, it was crazy. They were walking past a lot of browse, uh, a lot of food to get to a certain food, a field. I don't know if it was just bad combine in there or what they were doing, but all the trails led to there and pretty much none of them cut off to hit anything else. So, I um, mean, it was actually like, right where the parking lot to the main piece of public was is where they were all going. And I was like, this is all about to change up real quick when, uh, when the ice fisher get in there and, you know, start ice fishing heavily. And it did, man, right when those, I was running some mobile cams and right when those ice fishermen started coming in, it was like a light switch, uh, just that ground sitting them going in there. Uh, but you're taking these giant pieces and you're just, you're looking for good, a good mix of food and, and timber and not not and talking to people and figuring out kind of this is the better piece of the ground 
I feel like a lot of people will kind of tell you like, man, down south isn't very good, but we've seen some diesel end up here. And it's weird around here. There's like lines in the sand on properties that I could draw um, to where, okay, there's good deer here. There's not good deer over here. It's just like, for some reason, there's a line in the sand and they might cross every now and then, but your chances of killing one up there are way better. So that's about the same for you. Uh, yeah, I mean, I bounce around on different WMAs. Um, I personally like to stay on a piece like five to eight thousand acres, which I can, I can personally manage myself and the way I hunt and the way I scout. I can manage all that. Um, I can break it down. I can grid my trail cameras out. I can grid my scouting. Anything more than that. Um, it does get a little trickier, like that big piece that was down south. I probably hunted 15, 20,000 acres of it, but my intel wasn't, you know, even though I was running 80, 90 cameras, my intel wasn't near as good. Um, I was a lot more scattered. So I probably looking back would have done better if I focused it down on half of what I had my cameras on. But, you know, like my my favorite place I, I've ever hunted is was literally seven miles long. It's two miles wide. It's almost 8,000 acres. And I, as far as a scouting standpoint and a trail camera standpoint, I mean, from an aerial perspective, I mean, I had it gridded out good. You know, it wasn't just uh, all of my cameras were here or all my cameras were here. I, I gridded them out. Some of them weren't in really good looking places. And, you know, that told me things, you know, because the camera soaked throughout the years, you know, that spot, it may not be hot till January. And it may, those last two weeks of season, it may have been on fire. Um, so that's kind of how I go about that. And, you know, there's a, there's a million different ways to do this, but I've always just used my cameras for inventory. I've used my, my woodsmanship for everything else. Um, you know, I tell everybody, everybody knows me for running a bunch of cameras, but if it, if I really was to be honest with you, I'm really out there scouting. I'm not, a lot of times I'm not walking the roads. Um, I'm taking the, you know, the past to least resistant to the where I'm going. I'll cut right through the middle of the woods. If it's a known bedding area or something, I'll skirt that. But um, really that's why I've been so successful is, you know, my trail camera strategy basically is a hunting strategy and it's always kept me on fresh sign doesn't matter if it's september to january you're always out there we're at running cams scouting simultaneously you're always getting the freshest sign that's there and you're reacting to what you're seeing when a lot of guys are they don't run as many cams so they're not pulling as many cams so they're not out there walking around scouting as much as you so i like that you said that i think that that is I, I bet you that is a lot of your success that you've had is you're, you're a move maker, man. You're out there always making moves, always, you know, running cam. You're running cams when I'm not running cams and I, I love running cams, but you're still in the heart of it out there running cams and, and scouting along the way. I mean, I'll leave quite a bit of my cameras out, you know, 365. I got that five-year warranty with Exodus. So I'm going to make them earn it. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to work them cameras out, but I mean, even if you didn't have a bunch of cameras, man, that doesn't mean that you can't do in season scouting. That doesn't mean that it's wrong. You know, but if you're not seeing what you want to see, then get out and find it, yeah. you know? And uh, uh, I've always told everybody that it's just like life, man. You're, you're, you're seasoning, you're hunting, you know, you're going to get out of what you put in. And that's why I've never done anything. That's why I've never been big on going out West. I, I mean, I have, but I'm just not big. Like I'm right here at heart. Like I'm a deer hunter. I'm a, mm -hmm. I'm a bow hunter. And that's all I really care about because the way I do it, man, I just don't have a lot of time for anything else. Yeah. I mean, I'm the same way. My people are like, why don't you do this? I would like to kill a mule deer. That's the only thing that's on the list, but that's probably going to be like a muzzle loader hunt where I don't have to put a ton of time in, you know? Um, but, uh, I, I'm a hundred percent whitetail guy too. It's just gets something into it, but touching back on that in season scouting, um, you know, we all make mistakes, even if we're, we think we're a good hunter or we're very, very beginning, you're out there making mistakes. And last year, uh, a lot of people know our giant died 
um, but we relocated at our second biggest deer, which happened to be bigger than the one we were hunting last year. Um, so we were trying to, trying to find him, trying to find him, tried to hunt him, um, located him on, on his food source at night, of course, you know, okay, still alive. He's still in the area, started tracking him back. And, uh, I didn't, I didn't scout good enough. I didn't go in there. It was too thick. It was too nasty. I was worried about bumping deer. Um, late season, he's daylighting. I didn't have tags, of course. Late season, he's daylighting and uh, on mobile cam, and I can't hunt him, but I can't really get on this deer very well, even with cams. And uh, I went back in there during shed season and really scouted it, and I found an access route that's twice as easy as the one that I was trying to get to. Um, and literally if I would have went a hundred more yards through the thick shit, it opens up in this big marsh bottom. That's probably 50 yards wide and 150 yards long. And it's sheer, you know, sheer hills on each side, real thick cover. Um, and there's a shitload of acorns back there. And I've been looking up for acorns on this property for three or four years and can't never found them. Um, but I just pushed through that, hundred more yards of thick shit crawling on my hands and knees, you know, that high stem count bullshit stuff. Um, and then boom, it opens up into this glorious, you know, and then, then I found a backdoor exit that's easier to get in than the other way. And it, if I would have done that hundred yards further in season, I would have been right on top of where that deer was just that there was trees there. I could hunt ton of buck sign there. Um, and I was just short a hundred yards. Um, just literally not putting in the effort enough to say, Hey, I'm not going to push through that shit right now. I'm going to hunt the edge of that thick shit and not know what's on the other side, which is normally not like me. But. Right. I mean, I can touch on that a little bit. I, I killed five or six years straight and that come to a halt. Um, I haven't killed a deer. This will be my third season. I haven't killed a deer. And, you know, one thing that I've learned is you, you will, no matter how, good you are how much you hunt or how much you care about it like you will have unsuccessful seasons but what that does is that just wakes you up to the things you didn't pay attention to yeah you know and it's it's all about staying positive man uh it's you know i didn't kill a buck this year no, that's fine I, I got time to get better you know i i didn't find the deer i want well that that's fine. I got time to regroup. I got a better plan now. I'm going to get after it. Yeah, it's it's uh it's tough when you're trying to kill the the kind of deer that you're trying to kill. <laughs> it's hard to kill that. I was talking to a buddy at work today, and he was like, "This looks like good deer country." I'm like, "Man, this is real solid for 140, 150 class. They're there, but you get above that 180 mark." And they're just, they're imagine it. They're, you know, they're figure, figure of our imagination out there. They're there, but man, they're few and far between. And uh, we're able to find them, but damn, it's, it's, if people knew, same thing with you, if people actually knew how much work we put in behind the scenes that we don't post on social media and shit, they'd be blown away by, they're like, oh, you're always on big deer. I'm like, there's a reason, you know, there's a reason why I'm always on something good. And I, I know it's the same for you. And that's why we got huge respect for, for you here. It's just, you're out there putting in hella work, man. I think that's what separates you from a lot of guys is your worth ethic, your, your drive to not, not just kill, but to be the best person that you can be and the best hunter that you can be for yourself and not for anybody else. I feel like that's where 90% of the people miss, miss the game. You're, you're out there challenging yourself, not challenged to put a buck on social media. You're out there trying to do you yeah i mean we talked about this before we started you know now yeah. it's all about the clout and the deers on the wall and what i've done and what you haven't done and man if i'm being honest like i'm not out there competing with you or somebody else like it's me and it's me and me mm -hmm. um and you know sometimes i am a little hard on myself and you know, i'm 37 years old i'm having problems with my right foot um, I, I can tell, like, I'm not wanting to go how I was when I was 30 or 28, but I, it's, it's all, 
It's all right here. Like I wake up every morning. It's a grind, man. I wake up every morning, you know, when you're hunting hard and you just, I just don't want to go. If I'm be honest with you after day three. Yeah. On three, four hours of sleep, I just don't want to go. And mm -hmm. it's like, I, you have to be mentally prepared for it. And, you know, you gotta, you gotta keep in mind that, you know, nothing at the end of the day, we're just deer hunting. Yep. We're not, we're not, <laughs> listened, we're not, we're not taking a rocket to NASA. Yeah. You really don't give a shit what I kill. Let's just be honest no, with you. Like no. if, I, if I kill a 200 inch deer this year, you're going to be like, man, did you see that 200 inch deer Josh killed? That's going to be the end of it. Mm -hmm. So some of these guys, I feel like just from what I see and read, man, they just let it go to their head. And I really think it, it messes them up. So going back to what you said, man, just it just needs to be you yourself out there and you don't need to compete with anybody else. And if you yes. make it, and I've always said that there's a difference between um, making mistakes when you're trying and making mistakes when you're sloppy. Yeah. I remember, I remember one of the first episodes we had with you, we were talking trail cam strategy and homie was, you were talking about tying up your straps and you're like, you got to hunt cleaner than that, bro. We'll be out in the woods. I bet you we said that a hundred times to each other. <laughs> He'll do something. I've got, got to be cleaner than that. Got to be cleaner, Josh said. So got to be cleaner. I can't that. stand that, man. I can't yeah. stand them straps hanging. Yeah, I know. You got to be cleaner than that, bro. I remember <laughs> that to this day. We've said that a bunch of times, just because, um, you know, you you've been on that. So uh, next question, you you know, you're you're keen on the food, um, and that's that's king. Food's king. Um, when you're out there, you're running these cams, you're scouting. A lot of people are man, man. There's some big rubs in this area. There's some big tracks in this area. Or good scrapes. Is that, is that weighing on you at all if it's old sign or maybe does it have to be really fresh or what are you doing there if you're out there scouting now and you're seeing that? I'm going to get some cameras in the area. If I'm seeing good sign on 50 acres, I'm probably going to get a camera or two on it, no more than two. Um, probably on a good community scrape or on a good trail or on a good food source because I've always said that you know, a lot of people say, well, that sign's done at night, but really they don't know unless yeah. they've set their bunch or ran some cameras like they don't know. So I always take the time because I'm telling you, man, them deer, them, them mature bucks, four years old, three, four, five and older, man, they show up in places where I, you know, I don't, I can't believe they did. And mm -hmm. I got a deer over here. I shot where I could see my truck. Um, yeah. and it was probably a four or five year old deer, but I mean, yeah, all that stuff is, it's worth its weight in goat, especially a track, because that's one thing a, a buck can't hide is, is this track, you know, that, that track is kind of a deer signature and, you know, if you got a good track, you know, that's probably an older buck. Yeah. Sorry. My phone's phone's dying. Trying to get her going back on. You're probably like, why is he keep flipping the screen? Oh, back? Oh, my. <laughs> You're like, what is he doing? Yeah, my brother was kind of had to get her tuned back in. But yeah, that that's something that I've been trying to key in on more is is those tracks. And uh not only that, but like those uh those areas where there's just ass loads of tracks. I've been keying in on those and I'm thinking, okay, there's a shitload of does using this area. Why are they using this area? And then looking which direction are they going? Um and that ground that where the, this giant that I'm hunting right now is uh it's swampy, man. It's nasty and when they're coming up out of that swamp uh, on that edge, you can see all those tracks plain as day right there on the edge of those hills coming that up. That'll and mess with you too. Yeah, it will, dude. And it's on those on those trails. It's all small tracks, all those. Mm -hmm. And uh, there is a ton of good buck sign down there. But I ran cams on it, and I I told homie when I hung the cams, I said I don't expect there to be a good deer in here until late October because it just it's it seems like a doe area to me man it's it's thick I, I think it's too far away from the food for the bucks to want to go back there especially this time of year it's just there, there's got to be some pressure on the ground to push the deer back to be able to get those bucks back in there on those does but this, this afternoon I got a um, trail cam picture come in of a doe with two yearlings back in there and I'm like that's probably all the tracks I'm seeing you know all those does are back there with their yearlings and that thick cover, they got water. 
they're got they got everything that they ever wanted. They got clover, they got ag close. I mean, it's it's a good area, but it, do, it doesn't feel bucky to me, even though all that signs back there. I, I feel like it was sign that was put there, you know, during the rut and left, you know, or, or pre rut. But um, like you say, in those community scrapes, I know a lot of people talk about them and a lot of people have a hard time finding those but I can like just walk up to one. I'm sure you can do the same thing. And I'm like, all right, this is a community scrape just off the location. And like you said, a lot of that time is nighttime, but the size is different. The licking branch, it's always going to have a primo licking branch on a community scrape. It's not going to be some multiple. Yeah. It's not going to be all broke up, shambled. It's, there's going to be a lot of shit there. Um, it's going to be a good size scrape. And I hung uh, mobile on one and, uh, no shooters, a lot of really solid bucks using it right now, raking the, you know, raking the little trees and shit. And um, every day, every morning, daylight, they're in there. Uh, got like a 120 inch eight pointer in there every day right now. That's the biggest one that's there um, and uh, in this bachelor group. And I'm like, well, if he's using it every day, he's keeping it open for me, keeping it fresh for me. So yeah. when something moves in there later, um, I'll be on him. But, uh, so you're, if you're, if you're seeing the good sign, you're going to verify that that buck's still in the area. You're going to hang some cams and uh, see if you can get any more Intel in that area. So the, the big hype now is the beds and we we've, we've killed a few on the beds, but I've had a lot better success, 150, 200 yards off the beds on the travel routes to the food. So when you're scouting, are you, are you a bed scouter or are you a travel route scouter? I'm a travel scouter. I've never been big on a one buck, you know, kind of guy. I think that's what I'm doing this year, but I'm, I'm not big on it, man. I don't, I, you know, my motto is hunt like a coyote. I stack my odds. Yeah. If I got, if I got 8,000 acres, I'm probably honestly the month of November, I'm hung up on three or 400 acres because there's 10 or 12 Pope and Young's there that I know that I know of. 10 or 12. Damn. That's crazy. <laughs> I wish I had that yeah yeah i know it's not always that way but man um we always have like five or six solid bucks that we can chase on a property it seems like and then um they'll, there are so many bucks i don't know where they all go maybe it's the same thing for you there's so many bucks that are like right there like almost solid but just right under the edge of Ah man, he's he's right there, you know, and that's how it always seems to be is the two and three year olds, they're just right there, but they're just they're just not there yet. Um when when you're you're an you're an access, you know, your your travel route hunter, not a bed hunter. That's we kill them off the beds, but it's not we're not getting 50 yards from them. We're getting 100, 150 and killing them coming off. Um when you're when you're in these areas scouting, are you looking how you're going to access this during season right now or how you, how many times you could hunt an area you think, for example, the spot I am right now where I think this deer is, it's probably a four or five hunt all year kind of place. Cause getting in is just, if he's there on mobile cam, you need to hunt and you need to go in there in the rut. That's literally the only time you don't want to just go in there on a whim because you're going to bump deer i do not believe i don't know if you're the same way i do not believe that you can beat deer back to bed no matter what time of the year i feel like there's if you're hunting a bedding area there's always deer in that bedding area when you go into it even if it's 3 a.m i feel like there's deer in that bedding area yeah i mean i've always looked at it and this may not necessarily be the case but anything i don't walk through is no good yeah you know? and like you said access is king um you know, one thing you one thing that people do not realize is like you get in the position I am where some of these this buck I'm hunting this year, I got three years worth of history of him. OK, and everybody is like, man, that's good. That's good. But they're they're thinking like we think they're not thinking like that deer thinks that deer's thinking, man, prophet, I got three years on you, too, homie. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. he, he knows where I like to drop my cameras. He knows how I like to come in there. He knows where I like to probably park my truck at this place. Um, so you got to think about those things. Um, and if you look at stuff from aerial, 
it's a lot harder if you don't know an area. So if you were to go to Iowa this year, you're not going to do as good probably as if, as if you lived there at that WMA. Um, and it does, it, it is some trial and error, but you just have to use common sense. And man, as long as you are trying and doing the best you can do, then you don't need to beat yourself up over it because if you're giving it all you got, right or wrong, man, I'm going to pat you on the back because there's a lot, there's a lot of people that don't do that. You know, when I was, before I really started killing deer, you know, the, my biggest thing was um, I just went into an area and it just looked good. I didn't think about the three W's when, where, and why I just looked good. There may be a good rub or I felt good about it. So I hunted it and I never really killed anything. And that doesn't necessarily mean it was a bad place. I just didn't break it down from the access to what the deer were doing. Yeah, that's, that's the challenge, man. You, finding the deer is hard, but then they figuring out the access of what the deer are doing. Um, you could think that you have it and then you could see other deer doing something completely different. And you're like, damn, maybe the buck I'm after is doing that. Um, and me and homie we were talking about it a couple of years ago. Sometimes I think they're so secure in an area. They've lived there so long. They don't really have routes that they use all the time. They just, as long as they're in an area with the, you know, they're, they're cool. And they're just kind of going wherever they want within that buffer. Um, we've had bucks that are just so, there's no pattern to them at all. And we you know we've even, I, I titled them unkillable bucks. Like it's just luck. If you kill that deer, you knew he was there. It's a hundred percent luck. You didn't, you can't, you cannot strategically hunt him, you know, set the pinch point. You got a chance to kill him. Like that's, that's that kind of deer. Um, and I feel like that access is, you know, from bed to food, people are like, well, if you know where he's bedding and you know, the major food source, it should be easy. Well, actually it's not, it's that's, that's the hardest part. Like you can see him eating in a bean field. Okay. Copy. Where do I think this buck's bedding? Okay, good idea. How is he getting there? That and when is he getting there? That's the that's the thing that you have to do on the ground. You got to find those off trails. You got to find that sign or those tracks or something that's saying, "Hey, dummy, I need a sign out there." But we recorded a video and there's an arrow on some public land we were hunting. I'm like, "Look, it's a sign pointing to where all the big bucks are." I'm like, "That's yeah. what I need out here," because <laughs> uh, that's that's what it takes. But you're uh you're hunting almost all public, correct? Still, yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. So human pressure. Have you ever found a place that there's just too much pressure to hold big deer? Not hold it, but they kill them. Yeah, kill them. And it it changes the way they move, man. Um, I hunted a place. 5,500 acres. I've killed several Pope and Youngs off of it. And in 2015 or 16, I killed a deer and um, I ended up dragging the deer past somebody. Um, when I went to drop my buddy off his truck, at his truck, there was like six vehicles in the parking lot. Um, yeah. Yeah. And it, it was just there were too many people and that and that's what it, it all boils down to access this place was really accessible it was big but it was really accessible from from multiple um places and what had happened was man these deer they there were still good deer there um and they probably killed a boone and crockett off of it every year but what happened when this hunting pressure hit the deer still moved even during the i mean like during the rut but it slowed down and it pushed these deer into places, man, to where you really just couldn't hardly hunt them. I mean, you could, but I mean, you had to do a lot of, we had to do some trailmen. You can't do some trailmen on public land. Just a lot of real thick areas is, is what I felt like it went to. And um, I hung it up there, man. That day I killed that deer. I said, I was never going back and I'm never going back. Um, I hopped to another WMA. And um, I, I doing great on it. It was very similar in size, um, a lot less hunting pressure. Um, I actually have a con had a conversation with one of my friends um, that hunts uh, private ground, 
And the conversation was like, it was like, well, why do you care who hunts it? Or why do you care that he's saying that he hunts there? It's, you know, it's public land. And, you know, there's some truth there. It is public land, but man, you don't want to put that knife in your back. Like I'm all about everybody having an opportunity. I'm all about everybody getting outdoors, but I put a lot of work in a lot of work. And I'm, I'm telling you right now, and I'm telling everybody, I lie to you about where I'm hunting at. Yeah. We do the same thing. I mean, I'll, like, I'll, where, you, where you at? And my, a lot of times we're, we're way far, farther than we think they are. And they think we're close or we're close and we're way further. <laughs> and uh, we've even staged my truck and went and hunted in homie's truck. Just shit like that. Just anything we can do to, to throw them off our trail. <laughs> 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 I'll put mine in one parking lot and then be at a diff, completely different parking lot or even a completely different property. Um, took my wife's van. My wife's van's ultimate scouting, summer scouting machine. Nobody someone pulls over a van on the side, everybody's going to stop and say, are you doing all right? Yeah, I'm just doing all right. Just checking some shit out, you know, my car. And, uh, you got a truck out there with a hunting sticker on it. You're screwed, dude. You're screwed. People know, especially if they catch you there twice, they catch you there twice. It's over. I don't know how we bumped off on this, but I'm going to tell you now, right or wrong. I don't care whose feelings I hurt. There are people out there that will ride your coattail. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm not the best deer hunter out there. I'm not that good. I just work harder than everybody. And that's what I always say. But I'm telling you right now, I got some people that I'm friends with them, but I'm like, man, if they find out where I'm at, or if I give them this information, like mm -hmm. I know they're a good hunter. It's not that I don't want them to be successful, but like, you know, I'm you out here to do their to, own I, thing. You know, I'm out here trying to do my own thing, trying to fill my own tag. So you better keep that circle small. And like, yeah. even though I'm on this podcast, this is probably the 50 or 60th podcast I've done. Like you got to keep some stuff in your hip pocket. Man. Oh yeah, for sure. <laughs> for sure. Yeah. I know, uh, I know we were talking, we wanted to have someone on. Um, he's not like giant well-known name, but he's been on podcasts a couple of times. And he basically told us, he's like, Hey, love your guys' show, but not going to do any more podcasts because I got people you know, listen to what I'm saying and you know, I'm talking about these deer and then there, then I see them out there and I'm like, Oh, and they're like, Oh, we heard you on a podcast. I'm like, damn, you know, these things are podcasts are great for, for what we have, you know, going, but I, we film our hunts. That's even worse, dude. You want to talk about people knowing exactly where you're at, start filming your shit. And man, people are like, oh. I know I seen a guy on a piece of public land and he just took a picture of like a sticker on the back of his truck, whatever, and had some trees in the background and it said Illinois. And I said, Hey, I'm going to be out there tomorrow. And I just, the trees in the, like the top trees in the background, I knew exactly what parking lot he was in. He's like, what are you talking about? I'm like, I'll be there tomorrow, man. Tomorrow morning you hunting. He's like, yeah. I'm like, all right, I'll see you at the parking lot. Pulled in there. This guy's from out of state pulled in there. Boom. I'm like, what's up? And he's like, how did you know? I'm like, the trees in the background up there, dude. He's like, no way. Someone told you. I'm like, no, dude, literally it, it takes that much of a guy knowing, knowing what shit looks like and being there enough to, to narc you on where you're at. And we end up kind of working together a little bit. We both got our asses handed to us out there, <laughs> but I mean, I, I'm going to shoot you straight. If, if you and I aren't good friends and you tell me where there's 50 Pope and Young's and two 190 inch deers, you, you're full, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're probably gonna start seeing my cameras and running into me. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, I understand that, dude. That's part of the game. I mean, it's like you said, you're not. We're out there trying to kill the biggest deer we possibly can, and it's not a it's not a challenge against me and you. It's a challenge against that deer, and that big a deer is just so rare. But I feel like people get the misconception. They see so many on social media, like just giants that are killed. But you got to think about how many hunters out there aren't killing. How many hunters out there are killing two-year-olds? How many hunters out there are killing does? Like, and they're trying hard to even see that kind of quality of deer. But it's been like people have been desensitized to giant bucks because they're all over the place now. And they don't understand how rare 
um, a giant above 180 class whitetail, it, like a legit above 180. They don't understand how many years it takes for a guy to even find one of those, let alone hunt it. Because they've been desensitized. They think, oh, they're all over the place. You know, people are killing them all over. But I do oh, feel like, Iowa. yeah, in Iowa. Yeah, Iowa's <laughs> just out of this, out of the world, dude. I don't even know cold. about that. I'm so close to it, too. I'm like, man, I'm shit in the bed not going over there. But I always tell my wife, I said, when I can buck out in Illinois, then I'll start trying to go out other places. When I can kill the deer I want to kill here, uh, I'm an emotionally attachable hunter. I like to I like to go after a buck, but I'm also optimistic. If something solid comes by, I don't normally pass it up, you know what I mean? But I like to I like to make a relationship with a deer and try to beat that deer, try to understand what he's doing. Because every time you do that and you're successful or you see that deer, you're going to learn way more than if you shot some random buck off, you know, some, a pinch point or something. But yep. um, same thing around here, human pressure. They're there. Just like we were talking about that spot earlier that I got right now where I don't think there'd be any bucks until later. It needs human pressure to push those deer back. I need people to go out there and start glassing fields. I need people to go out there and start running cameras on the edges. I need people to go out there and start hanging stands. Those people are going to help that deer get pushed back in that area where I know he likes to be. I feel like if a deer is there, we know he's there in the summer two years ago. Um, we know he was there late season last year. We know he's there mid season last year. So I feel like the crops turn brown, people start getting in there. He'll be right back in there. That oh, yeah. corn does a lot too, man. That damn standing corn. People don't understand that. That that a whole deer on the edge for months. That that shit. Our uh, our one piece of private this year is all beans for the first time ever. So I'm interested to see what it's going to be like. It's it's only 40 acres, but there's a lot of ag around it. And uh, the guy was a pig farmer, so he only planted corn and fed it to his pigs. During COVID, pigs got so cheap he sold out everything. So he was just like. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm a crop farmer now. So he planted all beans this year. So be interesting to see what, what that does. I'm, I'm feeling like early season after those beans turn, we're going to lose a lot of, a lot of deer, but we'll see what happens. They don't have that corn to, to chill out in. So, but last question I want to ask here is, uh, what do you think makes Josh profit different than every other hunter out there? Uh, out different. there uh, ripping. Different. I grind different. I grind different. I grind different. I 100% agree with that. Different. I grind yeah. different, man. I just, uh, a thousand miles whitetail season's not uncommon for me walk, walking. Crazy. A thousand miles. Um, always 800. Uh, and, you know, you when you're always doing good you always got people talking shit and that just always really got me going um, yeah like when i picked up those tra that trad bow and everybody and their mom was like i will tell you what you picked up the trad bow was killing before it was cool brother you're 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 an og on that now it's cool now trad bows are cool well, like they ain't killing, they, they're not killing with them though that's the, no that's yeah the thing. uh yeah. You know, a lot, of, uh, a lot of pictures in the backyard shoot. Nothing against that, but uh, I told my wife, I said, when my kids get serious, start hunting a lot, I'll probably make the switch, but I'm going to make the switch and I'm going to, they're going to be shooting six pointers. I'm going to be shooting six pointers. <laughs> <laughs> and it's going to be an absolute blast. Man, I just, uh, I just get after it, man. Um, I feed off some of the negativity that, that people have given me. And, you know, if you're, if you're going to tell me that I can't do something or if the odds are stacked against me, like I'm going to do everything I can to, to, to get it lined out. Um, you know, I'm not a better hunter than anybody. I'm really not. I don't think I'm that good of a hunter, but I, I don't think that you will outwork me or anybody will outwork me. Um, I've always had a real good worth ethic. When I quit the coal mines, I had seven years perfect attendance. And if you want to, if I'm just being honest with you, I, I think that's something that a lot of people, you're born with it. Like you can't get it. You can't earn it. Like either you got it or you don't. 
Um, and I know I got it and I struggle with it sometimes when I'm grinding and I got them long drives and them long hanging bangs and I only got a few hours of sleep, but man, I just grind different. You know, I'm just, I'm that's these deer, my kids and these deer are all I care about. <laughs> I'm the same way, man. Kids, deer hunting. I'm thinking about two things. I'm thinking about what I'm going to do with my kids or what I got to do to get ready for deer season. That's, that's about it, man. I, I prioritize those two things. just like you. One thing I want to say, man, is you've been on this podcast a ton. Um, I wanted to have you on this time and I want, I want to congratulate you on finally get, I know you don't like the clout, but finally getting um, some people seeing what you're doing. Uh, I don't know. I mean, what was it? Three or four years ago when we had you on probably the first time. I don't know. It's been a hot minute. I mean, yeah, we've it's done been a long before. time, man. And, and I, I could tell from the first time we had on, you love, you love the game, man. That's why I think that you're different. People say they love the game, but they don't love the game like Josh Prophet loves the game. And here's the thing, man. If you took away social media, yeah, you would I lose would, a lot of hunters. We would lose. We would lose some hunters. Um, if you took away guns, we yeah. would lose some hunters. Uh, if you took away uh, wheels and and laminate limbs, uh, you would lose some hunters. Uh, I'm still going to be in the game. I'm 37 years old. I literally killed my first deer 30 years ago. I killed my first deer when I was seven. And, uh, you know, it's just something I was born with that, you know, my granddad engraved it in me. Like this is – I'm probably going to die out there. <laughs> whenever i you know that's probably how they're going to find me out in the woods dead of some natural cause because you know this is like this is who i am um and i'm not going to change it for anybody i dig that brother well appreciate you coming on congrats on all the success you've been having lately and uh, i'm looking forward to following your year uh i know you're gonna have a a bang up one and yep yeah. You're up. Oh, you got one more thing. What you got? Just, I'm just hunting one deer. I can't oh, believe I I'm that. I know that's crazy. You're on. You're on some. You're on some high fence Jenkins shit right now. On one deer and just out there, you're gonna waste your whole season. Man, on a, good day, man. on a Hopefully good day. Right, on a good day, right now he'd score about one thirty. <laughs> uh, <laughs> He might be five inches bigger, man. I seen the pics. He might be five inches bigger than that, um, bro. It, I don't know what I don't know what you got going on up there, but I don't want to say too much. But one thirty five is looking real nice out there. I tell you that right now. But it's an Illinois deer. Yeah, it's an Illinois deer, right out my backyard, actually. Yeah. Josh is coming down. He's gonna be hunting about twenty five miles from me. There you <laughs> go. Be showing all these pictures to his buddy, man. Look at this. Illinois deer I'm about to go hunt <laughs> <laughs> all right brother well appreciate you coming on all right man right on thank you yeah all right guys well I hope you enjoyed this episode of the whitetail legacy podcast Josh is always a great guest um he was running a little late there getting getting started but uh we got we got her done we got her knocked out um Huge shout out to Josh for coming on. Dude has always been a solid guest for us. Been on here multiple times. Been on a ton of podcasts, man. Been doing it from when podcasts first started um, to all the new ones that are coming. He's never turning them down. Um, real humble, great guy, great hunter. Um, just an all around solid dude. Um, if you guys aren't following him on all the socials, you need to be. Um, if you're looking to learn, this is the guy that you want to do it from. Um, he's going to teach you, you know, the right way. And uh, it's not always about you know, killing, killing the biggest deer. It's about going out there, having a good time and, uh, you know, working as hard as you can to, to get the job done. So Josh is a grinder, um, all the way to the core. And, uh, we love you, Josh, man. Appreciate you coming on. You guys made it this long. It would be awesome. If you guys could leave us a review wherever you're at of the podcast, let us know what you think, your honest opinion. We've been doing this a long time. I'm hoping to bring, keep bringing the good content recorded another season episode tonight with Josh guys. Um, I cannot wait to this release. Um, had a lot of fun in that episode talking with Josh. Um, you guys are going to love it. Um, the season series is looking phenomenal. Um, and be, be on the lookout for some new ad reads coming for quarter four here. 
Um, but in the meantime, um, like always, check out those Exodus trail cameras and uh, the new one, that 330archery.com. Um, we love you guys. We appreciate you tuning in all the way to the end. Always try to do the right thing. Try to leave a legacy. And Whitetail Legacy is out until next Wednesday when we're coming in your ear holes. <laughs>